Um, Python and hardware time. So this week's Python on hardware, a little special um, because, well, I'll go through a couple things and then I'm going to bounce over to um, probably what a lot of folks who like Python on hardware are here about. I'm going to ask okay. Katie and I'm going to surprise her with some questions. What? Yeah. So, um, of course, Py5, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but um, if you're interested in Python, there's a developer survey result. You can start to see like what are people really doing with Python across the world? What things uh, should you consider? Uh, how are they using it? Um, what's interesting is uh, more and more people are using it for embedded development that was never on there. It's interesting, it's going up. I mean, it's not yeah. a big number, but it's going up. Yeah. Not um, yeah, and, and the people that are using it are using a lot. That's that's the other thing, of yeah. course. Um, you know, half is for work. There's there's 28% that's personal use. Um, a lot of it use it on Linux. So this is just gives you like here's the here's the landscape of, of Python, especially if you're thinking like, oh, what are what are people using it for? So it's useful. We put in a newsletter. Um, it's open hardware month. We'll talk about uh, that in a bit. Um, and you can catch up on some of the open hardware news. Um, we have a bunch of certifications. Again, I'll talk about that once we get to the open hardware section of our show. Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest is going, and um, there's... We are participating. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of opportunities. You can do just about anything uh, around the CircuitPython world. Um, so uh, check it out in the newsletter and go to it for daily and see the latest, or you can just search for Hacktober. And then there's Libre PCB. This is another free tool. More free tools, the better. Yeah, interesting. I'm like, I, like I'm into it. You know, like I, I will admit, I currently do not use um, other tools. I'm still using Eagle. I'm, I'm still kind of slowly playing yeah, with that we're, CAD. We're eventually gonna get to. I'm definitely gonna, you know, eventually get to it. But, um, you know, um, I'd love to see more tools. Like there can never be too many yeah. options for people that are not. Uh, or CAD or LTM. Yeah. Oh, and uh, well, uh, this is great. The question is actually one of the things I was going to ask. Uh, this is good. Uh, it's about the Pi 5. Um, and uh, of it's course, go, go check out all the projects. There's a lot going on. But what I wanted to do, because a lot of, a lot of, I'll, I'll just kind of break it down. We bad. G good news, bad news. Uh, it's cool that there's a new Raspberry Pi out. I think the challenge is people need to know because before it was like, oh, it's going to be an educational computer. Now, obviously, it's kind of like they're adding all these things and it's a lot faster. And yes, it could be used for education, but there's a lot more. And then there's our world, which is like, well, can you do Python stuff on it? Um, so the question that just popped up in the chat was the same thing I was going to ask you is. Wow. So, coincidence. so yeah. So in context of um, one, the Python and hardware newsletter, but just generally speaking, what are the elements of the Pi 5 that, you know, um, you're interested in or excited about? And then what does this mean for people who do Python on hardware? Like we have Blinka, maybe we can talk about that a little bit, but what yeah. what do you think is like Lady Ada Engineer is uh, interesting about the Pi 5? There, there's a couple interesting things. First off, I will, I will say I do not, I'm not a beta user, so I do not have a Pi 5 and I'm not, I'm basing this only on like the photos and information that's out there. I also have not watched, I know there's like hour long interviews. I haven't had time to listen to this either. Uh, but from just looking at the specs and looking at the photo, the stuff that is most interesting to me is uh, we now have four lane MIPI and CSI. So big displays, big cameras, um, you know, very fast data transfer. Um, secondarily, um, the PCIe slot, I think is also very neat. I think people who are using the CM4 modules were like, hey, you know, there's PCIe yeah. connecting cellular modules. Um, is not going to be very easy before you kind of go through USB and like you, it's not as easy and fast and maybe you can't take advantage of. There's a lot of stuff for the laptop market that would be able to plug into an M2 format and use the PCIe bus. And so um, I think that there's definitely this kind of collision of like the Raspberry Pi 5 and a laptop comp computation capability. But they did keep the GPIO, which I think is great. And I think the thing that's going to be very interesting is the RP1. And I think that's a little bit of like um, like a silent strike. I don't know what the word is, but it's like, there's, it's like, what is this chip? Oh, it's a Southbridge. Okay. But knowing what they did with the RP2040 and knowing that obviously they must have taken everything they learned with the RP2040 and integrated it into the Southbridge chip, I think that it's going to it they're they're very smart and they know the kinds of projects people want to do with raspberry pi they know the constraints that they've had in the past because 
GPIO on single board computers is, on the Raspberry Pi, it's fairly fast, but in general, it's very slow and it's very clunky. It'll be very neat to see, do they add analog inputs? Do they add PWM outputs? Maybe pulse inputs? Maybe um, they have, you know, NeoPixels on the PIO. You can control like multiple, you know, NeoPixels through the GPIO. Having a really tightly coupled RP2040 for that, the PIO speed, um, you know, motor control, NeoPixels, PWMs, analog inputs, you know, PWM outputs, all that good stuff with the horsepower of the Pi 5 main processor and RAM, I think it could be, you know, it, it's a really big step up and it reminds me a little bit of the interesting stuff that the BeagleBone Black did where yeah. like, BeagleBone had this built- They filled a void because they were, you know, they're, they're, they're part of TI. So they're already like, let's make something that's, not just like a Raspberry Pi yeah. thing. Let's like kind of go to the next level. Yeah, this the built-in PRU, and I think the, with that there was like this Ethernet communications. But I think the Raspberry Pi folks they know they know this stuff. Like they have now full control, um, and you know it's it's funny. It's like you can tell that the silicon shortage. They were like, you know what? No, we're just gonna make our own chip. Like we are tired of negotiating and fighting and to get the the millions of quantities that we need at the price. We have to hit and i think they they i i don't know this i'm just guessing right so like don't i'm not speaking on behalf of raspberry pi but if i were them having gone through the last few years i would be like infuriated that well, i'm saying never you're again dependent. like never again you're so dependent on on a, yeah. a third party vendor because you're like okay i've de designed in your chip and you know they're making millions and millions and millions of raspberry pis a year and it's like if they're designed in and then now they're they feel like they're they're not i don't say held hostage but they're reliant on another company i think that one thing that uh from what i know about um raspberry pi folks is they don't like they really like to chart their own path and they don't like to be reliant so i think this was a really it's gonna be very interesting like they're gonna break the mold of what a single board computer can do with yeah. hardware interfacing okay and that's like a ramp but like no this is you know here's the thing you rant, so, rant. It, it, yeah and so I'm about to say something. This is not a ding on all the coverage out there. There's a lot of good coverage, but there's also a lot of coverage, which is just like, here's a Raspberry Pi 5, and they just read off a spec sheet. Like, that's not kind of our style. So like... Yeah, like the processing speed to me, I'm like, okay, cool. It's yeah. Factor. That's not that's what, interesting. That's why I thought it'd be good for like, you know, Lady Ada to like talk about like, and this is a good question, like what's interesting to you? And then as we get these, um, whether it be the end of October, however, these are going to get uh shipped out to the resellers um we'll have this type of in-depth stuff because what we don't want to do is just like quick get a video up so we can show that we have specs on it like i feel like the the community that's out there that's that really does electronics they can always read the spec sheet but i think there's there's other pieces of this that you know you're like here's how you can actually use it and here's the things in some context don't yeah you? it's a little bit like you know you play a video game like you know like you play a video game and you're like there's this like weird tool that you pick up and you're like, I don't, you know, what is this? But you're like, sometimes you're like, I know I'm going to need this for the boss battle, right? It's always like, like the glass sword. And you're like, wow, this is, this is so weird. I know that this is going to be something that I use. Like it's the most powerful tool in, in the entire game. If I just like learn the magic spell to unlock it. And I think that's where the RP1 is for me. Okay. Um, so stay tuned to the newsletter because we're going to be putting a lot of this stuff in, especially as the, the pie ships. Um, it's part of Adafruit Daily. It shows up at your mailbox every single week, adafruitdaily.com.